Hello, I'm Paul Dajczyk, founder of Elastic Steel Method of Athletic Condition. Uh, over the last few videos that I have posted, I have received uh, comments and posts and emails asking me about problems. However, very often the descriptions are so short and not to the point that there's no way I can even understand what's being asked. Something like, when I kick, my leg hurts. Can you help me? When I uh, do a split, I can't do a split. Can you help me? Obviously, I, there's no way I can do anything with that. So, what I decided to do instead is go over certain cases uh, that I had in the past and for you to maybe figure out, based on those cases, if you have something similar, partially or completely, and that might be able to help. And basically, I'm going to focus on certain issues that people have when they do the kicks. Okay? Muscle tightnesses, muscle weaknesses, incorrect techniques, and things like that. So, here's a case, and this case I believe is pretty common because I encountered it a few times in different people. Uh, and often it happens when somebody had kicked for a while, whether it's karate, taekwondo, um, other styles of martial arts, and then after a while you stop kicking and you got back into it again. So, if you're in that position, or somebody maybe potentially who just started, but usually for people who didn't kick for a while, they still have neurological connection there, they know what a kick is supposed to look like, and then they start kicking again, then they keep getting injured all the time. Okay? So, set the kick now, a side kick. A regular front leg or a rear leg side kick. Usually doesn't happen with spin back kick. Um, and this also happens very often with people that like to pull in the side kick sharply, throw it out and pull it back. I'm talking about someone's side kick just practicing it, not against a target. Okay? So, the pains that usually come up are in this area, okay? This are the inner hip flexors or the upper adductors, okay? And usually what happens is somebody does a few kicks, they feel something is wrong, they do a few more, they get injured, maybe in the same session or after a few sessions they take a break, it heals, they do it again, they get injured, and this happens till potentially someone just stop kicking or stop doing that kick okay so there are a lot of things that have to be looked at even before somebody starts kicking unfortunately most instructors don't do that so if we're going to talk about a side kick okay a side kick the way you saw me demonstrate previously with the turnout of the supporting leg and the body in line when the kick is thrown and extended Okay, so I'm gonna do it on the floor here. So we're here, side kick comes out. Okay, now what happens when side kick comes out? You need basic flexibility of the muscles here, the flexor hip. I'm not gonna say hip flexors, I'm not gonna say adductors because their roles can interchange. The muscles here that flex the hip and the muscles here that pull adduct the hip. Okay? Remember, once the kick is thrown, the extension forces the flexors into the position of flexibility and the abduction, of course, forces the adductors into the position of lengthening. Okay? So, this may sound very basic and it's not something that easy to see when someone is on the side standing or even lying down on the side. It's much easier to see when somebody's on the back. I'm going to show you that in a second. So, a person here saw the side kick and he can compensate or she can compensate with the whole back which is a very bad thing to do. If the leg doesn't extend all the way because of the tightness here you'll compensate with the back. However, very often the glutes contract at the extension of the kick, so the back doesn't compensate that much. And what ends up happening is, you overstretch the muscles here that don't have the range of motion for a complete kick. And that is half the problem. The other half of the problem, and I'm talking about at the hip, not at the knee right now, they decelerate that kick, which is already bad, you're not just stretching them, you also use them to decelerate, and you're using them to pull back. 
okay back into the chamber okay a lot of problems if you don't have the range of motion there so you're supposed to have the range of motion there before you start working on that side there. okay so you want the side lying down or you're standing there's compensations going on um, with your pelvis with your low back you can't tell you go on your back you could tell okay so what you're supposed to do is supposed to go on your back back flat look at the previous videos test one leg boom you see my back is flat my leg is on the floor abs controlling that okay other side okay now what this person had I asked him to extend it was extending to about here other leg was even worse, it was extending by here. Okay, both legs, it was like this. One side was a little bit higher. Tighter side, the one that was getting more injuries. Both sides were tender, one was actually getting injured. So from here, I said, okay, well, let's adapt. As he began to act, the knees began to come up. Okay, so that means that if I'm going to turn over and keep everything the same, this is about as far as his sidekick should have been coming out. He had no more flexibility. Back protected to extend that leg out. Okay? Of course, you would say, well, why not arch it? Well, what happens is when the glutes contract, it messes up that arch. Okay? And the glutes do contract when you saw that kick. Okay? So this is about as far as that person should have went. Okay, or he should have kicked lower, because remember, I showed you, as you begin to abduct, here, the knees begin to come up. So, a low kick might have been okay, begin to abduct, okay, the hip begin to flex. So, that was the problem, don't start training before you have the range of motion to train in. Okay, and that person clearly didn't. So I ask, uh, do you sit a lot? What kind of work do you do? Yes, this person was sitting a lot. Okay, develop tightness there. The body still remembered how to kick. The body thought that the leg would go all the way out there, but the muscles didn't, didn't let that happen. So, the release techniques, using pressure, stretching techniques, static and dynamic, okay, kicks, Notice that if a slow kick was done correctly, it would have been easy to see if there's compensation, if there's no compensation. Okay? Notice slow kick is slightly different because the glute could be relaxed as an extensor and only contract as an abductor. Okay, that is possible. However, when it's a fast kick and you're trying to give everything you got, the glute contract is an extensor. If it's only holds the leg up, it just works as the abductor. Okay? So, if you have that issue, what would you do? Once again, you would release the muscles there, don't forget the soles. You would stretch them, or statically get them to the point. Strengthen them, of course, now we just stretch, also strengthen. And then after that, you would start getting into faster and faster movement, once you have that range of motion. You would actually work on pulling back from a straight leg, okay, and then you would come out and come back, okay. So if you have that, that will be something to look into. Thank you for watching. Lunch, stand up, okay.